This week on Maker Update, a DIY digital camera that's made to be played with, Google's little signals, dismantling cookies for science, and unlocking your computer with push-ups. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well and pushing forward with whatever you're working on. If you could use some inspiration, though, you've come to the right place. Let's get started with the project of the week. On his blog, Christopher Geschman describes his experiments with creating his own unique digital cameras. These days, most of the interesting things you can do with digital photography happen after the photo is already taken. Filters, effects, cropping, it's endless. What Christopher has done is design a number of cheap 3D printed cameras where you can really play with the image before you snap the shot. There's a tilt lens where you can create weird focal planes, rise fall mounts that can distort the angles and create stronger vignettes, focus rings for cheap lenses that wouldn't normally have them, even a dual camera system where you can take simultaneous shots on two different lenses. Inside each camera is a Raspberry Pi Zero, a rechargeable 18650 battery for portable power, and a Pi camera module. But we've seen Pi-based cameras before, and that's not what makes this project interesting. So often I see projects where someone makes a DIY version of something that already exists. But projects like this are my favorite because a maker wanted something that didn't exist yet. Something too weird or risky or unprofitable for a company to make. And in the end, you get this fun invention that nobody else in the world has but you. It's just the best feeling. You can find Christopher's code and the design files using the link in the description. Now for some news. Google Seed Studio has unveiled a series of experimental IoT notification objects you can create for your home. The project is called Little Signals, and it's a showcase of alternative ways we can weave subtle notifications into our lives. They show these little desktop objects that use sound, movement, or visual indicators to gently grab your attention. To that end, the objects use little blower fans and motors and speakers to make noises or create motion. I think it's a neat enough concept though, I have to wonder if these little signals would really be enough to grab my attention. You can find the example Arduino code and 3D model step files using the link in the description. More projects, Crystal Owens from MIT has published a scientific paper and an associated 3D printed design dedicated to the study of the shearing and separation characteristics of Oreo cookies. I had to look this over twice to make sure it wasn't some sponsored content or an April Fool prank, but from what I can tell, it's legitimate and awesome. Apparently, the study of the flow of matter is called rheology, and one of its principal instruments is a tool called the rheometer, which applies forces to a substance to measure its change. So naturally, studying the material characteristics of Oreo cookies would be called oreology, and it would require a specialized instrument called an oreometer. The design here clamps to each side of the cookie sandwich, then weighted arms that are designed to be loaded with varying amounts of pennies are used to apply a specific amount of twisting force to the Oreo until it breaks apart. Not only do I love this project, but I love thinking about other testing rigs that you could design for other kinds of standardized foods. It might not be MIT research paper worthy, but there's at least a hundred different science fair projects you can spin out of this idea. But when it's time to shed that Oreo weight, Victor Song has you covered. He's created a Raspberry Pi based system that requires him to unlock his main computer by doing five push-ups. What makes this project especially unique is that Victor turns to machine learning for his solution. He trains a machine learning model to recognize the difference between the up and down positions of his push-up and then count how many have been done. And to prevent the possibility of just entering his password, the Pi spams his computer with backspace commands until the push-ups are completed, making it impossible to type. It's a fascinating look at how to tackle problems with machine learning and computer vision. I could see how someone might solve the same problem with hardware and sensors, but I really enjoyed seeing how a machine learning approach provided a valid and arguably more foolproof solution. Now for some tips and tools. On Tindy, I saw this cyberpunk-inspired watch by HCLI. You can get it as an unassembled kit. And aside from the design looking pretty cool, I especially like the LED filament on the right side for a bit of neon glow. There's a bill of materials on Tindy where you can view the components and maybe incorporate some of them into a design of your own. 
And on printables, I got a kick out of this giant 3D printed NeoPixel by Make TV. You can use it as a coaster if you like, and there's built-in holes for wiring in your own red, green, and blue LEDs. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, I recommend checking out Adafruit's new series, Chip Shortage. As we move from denial to acceptance around the global drying up of supplies of electronic components that were once commonplace, a show like this is a kind of support group for those in search of the unobtainable. It's also a place where you can hear about component substitutions that may get your project back on track. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you're up to. You can get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making the whole thing possible. And thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.